got out of the service and my mom said, well, Johnny, you, you don't want to be a jazz musician. I said, why? She said, well, look, those, they're all dope fiends. You know, at the time she was right, you know. <laughs> You know, but uh, she wanted me to get it. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what <laughs> now, what's the reason right. behind it? Right, yeah. uh, but uh, but she and my dad, they were they were always proud of me, regardless of what I did, and and I did achieve uh, a level of success. That mm -hmm. my dad was, uh, you know, I uh, my for my dad, uh, I I still have his guitar. He gave me his the old, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, forty two Epiphone. Deluxe, oh, wow. and uh, I still have the guitar, and I've used it on so many great recordings, you know. But I would, uh, I, I would always bring it to uh, a date with uh, uh, recording to any any about, well, mm -hmm. particularly Joe Pass. Mm -hmm. And the, the story with Joe was, uh, I'd bring that, and then I'd bring another. Uh, I had an L5 that was mm -hmm. really a nice guitar too. However, the L5 wasn't like it; it wasn't as slick as the as the Epiphone, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'd, I'd say, Joe, if you want to do acoustic, you, you know, you can play this. And uh, and he'd say, okay, and he'd pick it up. And then I'd be playing the other, and he'd say, let me try that one out. And he, I'd hand it, and I knew it was going to happen. He'd, and he'd play it, he'd say, I'm playing this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I brought that for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make any difference. Didn't make any difference. Well, I mean, you know, so, somebody's got to take your gear. Yeah, Come but the, on, but the thing is, a great player, the right? highlight of yeah. that was yeah. that I did, uh, I brought the album after it was released, brought it to my dad, and I said, Dad, this is your your guitar that Joe is playing, and he was really proud of that. You know? I'll bet. Yeah. Was he a professional musician, too? No, he, he was a professional mailman, but he played uh, with his uh, cohort. His brother played uh, banjo, and they, they would just rehearse every week and play at different, you mm -hmm. know, they always had parties in those days, and mm -hmm. uh, they just had a ball. Oh, that's great! And he he played and sang and had is that what got you into the whole thing? Well, I at what point so. did like the light bulb go up? Bing! Uh, you know, this guitar thing could be really be cool to do. You know, I mean, what what well, inspired you? I mean, at an early age. Well, I, I never thought it was. Uh, now, how I old just, were you when you started playing? Well, I started when I was uh, in my teens. I think about thirteen years old. Oh, you're kind of a late bloomer. Yeah, <laughs> just joking. Yeah, I yeah. played yeah. Uh, I I played piano a couple years before that. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, Anyway, I I always loved the sound of the instrument. I never thought much about. Uh, I thought I'll play guitar and whatever happens with it. And I, I really put a lot of energy into it, a lot of hours of practice. Clearly, yeah. yeah. And well, you uh, loved it, right? Yeah, I, mean, I just yeah. loved it. I for yeah. whatever it was worth, I enjoyed playing the guitar, and I enjoy yeah. I loved the sound of it. So uh, I worked. Uh, Nothing really big around New York until 50, well, 1951, the Korean War, mm -hmm. and I was drafted. Uh, uh, but I made a quick uh, trip to the Air Force uh, 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 recruiting office because I knew I had a better chance of getting the band in the Air Force. Uh, the Army was, uh, they were shipping guys right over into the Marines, and you mm -hmm. know, and I wasn't about to do that. I thought I'd hurt my hand and I couldn't play the guitar. Right. <laughs> Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I wound up in the Air Force and was lucky enough to uh, achieve uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that there was only one authorization for guitar in the whole Air Force at that time. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for it, and I so I would, and I got the uh, I got the, the 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 immediate staff sergeant rating, which meant a lot of, a lot more money than if you were a private. You know? mm. So uh, anyway, and then I uh, there were some great musicians, and I was stationed in Washington D.C. most of the time, and uh, had a chance to do a lot of real professional kind of work, like radio shots, and then touring and playing uh, at the Pentagon and. It's interesting because not many people would probably say that they really sort of got their professional, you know, start in, in the military. It's yeah. A, well, uh, like prior to that, I was playing like uh, Italian weddings and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know. And uh, I figured eventually I would make a step and not uh, another step. Well, I'm sure you would if you're playing alone, warranted. Uh, uh, yeah. Still, I, I but it's just interesting that that career path sort of unfolded for you. Yeah. 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 And then when did you start like doing recording? Sessions, I like uh, on playing on on records, or did it start with jingles or? 
Oh, well, that, that like, uh, like many other guitars if you've interviewed, I guess that happens kind of, you fall into a s situation where uh, you, somebody recommends you and then you're called uh, to help out somebody, sub for somebody, and then they hear you. And then At the time, there was a, you know, when I got into recording, there was a lot of work, you know, and uh, you, could, you could make a, a pretty good living playing, playing guitar. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know LA's changed quite a bit. Oh yeah. It's, when I was it's, talking to Tim May and he was talking oh, about yeah, how things yeah. had been in the seventies yeah. when he got right. here oh, versus yeah. now and, and how many more guitarists they exactly, need. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. but when I how I got into that was I got out of the service mm -hmm. and uh I uh I, I got out of the Air Force in nineteen uh, uh fifty six I think. Uh uh fifty five, fifty six. And uh wound up going, uh, uh, applying for, uh, uh, I was going to go into Manhattan School of Music and study there. Uh, at that time they didn't even accept guitar, even classical guitar as a major, it would be a minor and you had to play another instrument. So I was prepared to do whatever because I, I wanted to be in music, you know. And uh, so I enrolled and paid tuition and then suddenly got a call from uh, Chico Hamilton to take uh, Jim Hall's place with his group. The group was like, that was the premier top group in the country at the time. So I, uh, I wound up coming out here and auditioning and uh, got the gig, stayed with him for a couple of years, and then did some rec some recording and from, from that time, uh, uh, that was like by 1960, I was starting to pick up recordings and dates here. Mm -hmm. And uh, other guitarists would come in and, uh, you know, send, send me out on uh, substitute, uh, substitute some gigs for them if they had a double booking, you know. Right. One of the guys was Al Viola. He mm. was uh, probably the one I could count on most. He, uh, he, he got me he, all kinds of work. He, you know, cause he was very busy. He worked with Sinatra for 25, oh, 27 yeah, great, years. Great. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, he was a good friend, a dear friend. So before I knew it, I was making some pretty good money uh, in studios, uh, doing all kinds of stuff, you know. And uh, then Herb Alpert called me, and I, I wasn't uh, sure about making that move, so I kept on kind of avoiding and turning, turning him down, you know, because I it took a long time to establish in the studio, and I didn't I didn't really want to go on the road, but I realized the the uh, vastness of his popularity at that time, uh, after his first couple of albums, uh, it... Uh, and he had this little record company. Yeah. A&M. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. And and records. They, they hadn't yeah, moved yeah. into the big time, yeah. but they were still a little... little right, person. right. So, so uh, uh, finally, one day he called me and said, I want to get get you to, to do some stuff. And he said, why don't you, uh, we're going to have a meeting of all the guys, and I knew all the guys in the band, they were all really excellent musicians, and, and he said, I, we want to go on the road and do uh, uh, our first gig in Seattle for a couple of weeks uh, at the Edgewater Beach Hotel, and, and uh, I, I said, okay, uh, I'll, I'll do it for two weeks, but I, I'm not going to make any promises, you know, so... So I went and did the thing, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. And, and you did a lot of recording with them too. Oh yeah, oh I did a, at least uh, fifteen, sixteen or more albums with with Herb, and then that's not. So I guess they didn't care for your playing, huh? No, they didn't. Uh, they, <laughs> I, they wanted to see me get it right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna give you just one more chance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. I wound up uh, along with that, uh, uh, staying with Herb for. Uh, until about 1970, and then when he reorganized uh, later on in 76, and then into the 80s, he did another tour that he went, you know. So I worked for him to, uh, time to time through, through there. You know. Yeah, that's great. And now you're, you're playing. You're not one to rest on your laurels, are you? Oh, no. I no, mean, you're so. always playing. You're teaching. Oh, you, just, yeah. you're, you just wrapped up your school session right now. Yeah. And, yeah. and you uh, also have your own signature guitar. Yes. Which uh, I want to talk about a little bit sure. right after this break. <laughs> 